You know, we need healthy, big agribusiness companies to be able to invest enough in the technology that we need. I mean, this is a very high-tech piece of equipment, a lot of technology built into it that makes farming far more efficient and does the things we're going to need in the future. In the future, we're going to need more of that technology because we are really going to have to double the production in the heartland, in the, in the grain belt in the Midwest over the next probably 30 years, and we're going to have to do that with less water use and less intrusion on the soil, less soil erosion. And a big part of that answer is going to be through technology, and the only way you can get that is through millions and billions of dollars of investment, and most of that investment is not going to be from the public sector. Uh, the public sector is, is pinched now, and it's going to be cutting back. That investment's going to be in the private sector, and we need big, healthy companies like John Deere, and I'm, I'm delighted they're here, and I'm delighted they're expanding, and they're critical for our future. As, as sort of a major curator of that public sector that's being squeezed so tightly right now, I mean, t talk a little bit about sort of the, the partnership and sort of the potential for, um, for some of that research in, in terms of its importance to not only you know, not only John Deere as a company and farmers as business people, but also just as, as somebody like the state of Kansas. Well, we need the research from the public sector. But I, I think in the future, the public sector research has got to be a lot more connected. It's either got to be basic things that are big and needed for the next private sector breakthrough, or it's going to need to be some sort of transitional or translational research, as they call it, where it, it just helps get that product right into the marketplace. Yeah. We, we can't afford to research a whole bunch of things that produce nice papers but not really moving the ball forward for us as an economy or as us as a people. Uh, and so you're going to have to work that a lot more on the translational part with the private companies like a deer or some genetic companies. And you're going to have to focus a lot more what's your basic pieces that you really need to, to move forward, to have a grain sorghum crop in Kansas that can produce high yields on no additional waters in the high plain uh, atmosphere that we have. Uh, th these are gonna, we're going to have to be a, a lot uh, more targeted about it and not just say, okay, we're going to put a lot of money out here. We need to put money out here, but it's going to have to be a lot more targeted. Oh, my goodness, number one, uh, we have fewer farmers. Number two, uh, this whole facility represents our country's effort to feed this not only our own country, but a troubled and hungry world. We stop doing that, and you're going to have a lot of hungry uh, nations around the world, and they're going to be causing all sorts of trouble. So this goes back to a uh, humanitarian issue, it goes back to a national security issue, and it goes back to the fact that we have to double our ag production in the, in the next several decades. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we're not going to do it like the president did by trying to cut out crop insurance and cut $33 billion out of agriculture. We can probably meet that number, but it's going to have to be across the board, not just aimed at farmers. So I'm getting a little off track here, but this facility here represents our capabilities down the road to double that ag production for 9 billion people on this planet. We have six now. Think what that's going to mean down the road, and think what that's going to be uh, in regards to world security. So uh, this is an investment in the future of the planet and also uh, our future here in America.